Hello, welcome back to my channel. It is Amanda. Today I'm here with the eyeshadow palette tag part two. This was created by Samantha Martin and Allie Glines. They created the original and the follow-up. And if you are not new here, you know how much I love eyeshadow palettes and talking about them. So I thought this would be perfect. There are 11 questions here, and I will have Samantha and Allie's channels and videos linked down below. They're both totally lovely. You already know who they are. But let's get to the question. The question is all-time favorite, which is not really fair to start a video off that way. That's really challenging. <laughs> but I have to think about every time I use this palette, I love how my eye makeup looks. And unfortunately, it's discontinued. I actually don't know that a lot of these are still available. But the palette is the Good Sport Palette by ColourPop. I just love this palette. This um, sister shade up here, I love this as a one and done shade. Ebb color is beautiful. I like this um, hooky shade up here, this really pretty burnt orange. I just think that this is such a beautiful palette. The color story in here and how these I'm so polishes eyeshadows perform. I like the size. It's not bulky, but there are color options. You can do something darker, you can do something lighter. I just love this palette so much. I like that there's no mirror. The next question is a new favorite, and that would probably be the Lorac Pro Noir palette. But this is kind of the opposite of <laughs> the Good Sport palette. It's very neutral. I am really surprised at how much I like this palette, to be very honest, because these aren't colors that I wear every single day, except I find myself reaching for this palette when I don't really know what else to wear or I don't have a lot of time. I find myself reaching for this palette. The formula is fantastic. These are definitely not as soft as like, the older Lorac shadows. Though. I really never minded the very soft Lorac shadows. I kind of like those. These are definitely not as soft as those, especially the, the matte shades. But these metallic-y, shimmery shades, they're like creamy. They are just beautiful. This is a lovely palette. Oh, this does have a mirror, but I covered it with the shade names because I don't use the mirror. Question number three is keep for the memories. And this was kind of hard too because I am a, a nostalgic person and I am sentimental about some things, but I'm getting a lot better about not being as sentimental about makeup because it's makeup. The one that I chose, I don't really have memories attached to this palette, but I can't seem to get rid of it and I, I don't really want to get rid of it. I think that it's a beautiful palette. But that would be the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette. Of course, we all know that Tati Beauty is no longer open. I think that this palette is really beautiful. I love how it's set up. I love the layout that there's a monochrome column for each color. The glitters in here are not chunky or loose. There's a nice base to these so they don't, you know, fall in your eyes and scratch your eyes. I do think that this palette is very beautiful. This has an enormous mirror. I know I just said that I don't use the mirror, but if you need a mirror, it's an enormous mirror. I'm not really keeping this for any specific memories other than I'm just keeping it because you can't get it anymore. And I'm not keeping it because I don't like the palette, but I also find myself not using it as much because you can't get it anymore, but I also will not get rid of it. I don't really know what kind of memories those are, but... The next question is a palette that you think is underrated. And I know I just talked about the Lorac Pro Noir palette. I'm going to just talk about Lorac as a brand. I think the Lorac brand is lovely. And I'm going to show you the Fairy Tale Forest palette. This pop of green got me. The formula is still beautiful. The mattes are wonderful. These shimmer shades are like creamy and lovely to apply. This green got me. Okay. I'm a sucker for this green. But this pink shade right here. It's kind of a gold sub pink shade. Absolutely beautiful. I love this palette. I use this palette a lot in December. It's beautiful. Formula is amazing. And I'm, I'm happy for Lorac because I don't like when brands close or like aren't doing well. It makes me sad. So I'm happy that they've had some successful launches with these newly formulated palettes because I think that they're really beautiful. I have two of the, the newly formulated and they're beautiful. The next question is not a, well it's not a question, I guess, prompt, is not a favorite but can't get rid of. And the one that came to mind was the Sure Pill Capsule Collection. This is, there are two versions. I don't know, there's like a C, there's like a volume one and a volume two, I think. I don't know which one this is. There's nothing wrong with this, but I just don't reach for this as much as I thought that I would. The Sugar Pill brand is a well-loved brand in the like kind of indie community, I guess. I consider Sugar Pill kind of an indie brand. I don't know, their 
parent status. <laughs> I like the clear acrylic packaging. I like that you can see through the whole the whole palette. The shades in here are beautiful when I wear them. I, I do like it, but I just I just don't really ever reach for this, and I always think, oh, I can probably pass that on, but I never do. I probably should. This like smoky gray color. Come on, it's so pretty. Do you guys have this palette? How do you feel about Sugar Pill? What, what's wrong with me? The next prompt is favorite collab, and I do enjoy a lot of the collab palettes that I own. Probably my favorite, though, is going to be the Kaleidos and Club Nebula palette. I just love these colors. I like how dark they are. I like how bright some of them are. I like how kind of grungy this purple is and this, oh, this bright green. These shades are kind of like topper shades, a little bit shifty. It's just a really beautiful palette. I wish it wasn't quite as bulky, but that's not really a deal breaker. I just really enjoy this palette. I think that Angelica did a great job creating this color story. I think this is a very her color story. 2021 favorite is easily the BH Cosmetics Passion in Paris palette. I have talked about this palette so many times. I'm sure you're sick of it. I absolutely love these colors. This formula is impeccable. The colors are so blendable, buildable, they're not chalky, they're not patchy. I absolutely love this palette. I did see, I was in TJ Maxx the other day and they had a lot of BH Cosmetics in TJ Maxx because they are restructuring and selling off their assets. Like I don't really know what's happening with BH. I hope it's not the end of BH Cosmetics. But if you're in TJ Maxx, I would check the makeup section because they had it looked like they had just gotten a bunch of BH Cosmetics and it was all wrapped in pristine condition because we know we know what it's like at TJ Maxx sometimes. It's rough out there. I did not see this palette there, but I saw the Switzerland palette, the I think the Love in London palette. They had other collabs that they have done. There were a lot of BH Cosmetics products in uh, the TJ Maxx makeup rack, so I would if you're looking for BH Cosmetics, I don't know if they're still on Ulta's website, but if you can find this palette, I highly recommend this palette. I mean, if you like purple eyeshadow. If you don't like purple eyeshadow, this isn't going to do much for you, but if you like purple eyeshadow... Far and away, 2021 favor. I moved, and now I'm all yellow. For a palette that you didn't expect to love, Really ever buy a palette and I expect to not love it <laughs> so that was a little more difficult for me to think about but I guess when I'm thinking about an overall color story and how much I like that color story versus how often I use the palette it would probably be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette I know that this is a favorite for a lot of people I don't know if this is I think they brought this back they brought it back at some point I don't know when what's time I don't know I don't know if it's still available is what I'm trying to say it's very neutral, but it's very pretty. I think I only have two Anastasia palettes right now. The other is the Riviera palette, which I do really enjoy, but that's very bright, which I also love. So these shades, collectively, I don't think, yes. But I really like this palette. Every time I use it, I think that my makeup looks like pretty. When I use this, this palette, I love this Cyborg shade, and I love this... Um, I love this bloom shade. I actually like using these three together. It looks like a cool like, Robocop makeup or something. I don't know. But I really do like it. I like birch, obviously. This was in a Pan That Palette project. I didn't think that I would like this as much based on the colors. The next prompt is a palette that sparks joy. And for that, I chose the Urban Decay Stone Vibes palette. First of all, the packaging. If this packaging doesn't make you happy, I don't really know what will. Like it's, it's faceted and raised and textured and multicolored and sparkles. And then you open it up and you have all of these beautiful shades in here that look, I guess these are duochromes. The other reason though this palette sparks joy is this was sent to me from Urban Decay, so that's always exciting because, you know, I've used Urban Decay eyeshadows for years and this was sent to me um, as PR. I still think it's weird that brands send me anything. <laughs> I'm very thankful for that, but I'm, it's, it's weird, you know? So I always think about that when I use this palette because 
Um, that's just like exciting. That's just exciting that Urban Decay is a huge brand and it, it just, it's one of those little things that I think it's pretty cool. This is the top to me. And I do really like that, so even better. The next prompt is the newest palette in your collection and there are a few. The first two are from uh, BH Cosmetics. I did purchase these at TJ Maxx. These are the ice cream shop, or the sweet shop. There's the bubble gum and then the pistachio, the blue and the green. I've heard amazing things about these and I love blue and green eyeshadow. And these are, I think, yeah, $7.99. I never purchased any of these when this collection was available, but I couldn't say no. So I did buy these. And then the other palette came in my Beautylish Lucky Bag, and that is the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. This is my, I mean, it's technically my first Natasha Denona palette because the other Natasha Denona palette I had was a mini palette. Um, and I actually returned that, so this is my first, like, big girl Natasha Denona palette. I haven't used it yet. I don't know. I, I do think that it's very pretty, and I, I am excited to use it, but the price point of this just gets me. Like, it just gets me. But I'm excited to use this palette. I just... And then the very last question is the first palette you used in 2022, and that would be the Milani and Juicy Jazz um, Like a Dream palette. This... Uh, I purchased this kit from Walmart. So it has the eyeshadow palette, a highlighter, and then one of their lip crayons. And this is very pretty. I like this more every time I use it. I used it several times in January and the first time I thought, okay, whatever. I like it more every time I use it. I do think that the mattes are still like a little bit, a little bit patchy, but these um, shades, these like foil gilded shades, perform so much better than a lot of their previous gilded shades that I've tried and I love these, these colors. So this is the first palette that I used in 2022. So that is the eyeshadow palette tag part two. I would love to know your answers to any or all of these. I'll have the questions listed in the description box. Answer from there or if you make a video, let me know. Thank you to Samantha and Allie for making a second part of this video. I, I love a tag video. That's all I have to say. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you in my next video.